The Wizard of Oz is a 1939 classic film produced by Metro Goldwyn Mayer and is an adaptation of L. Frank Baum's 1900 children's novel, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. The film was primarily directed by Victor Fleming, who later left to take over another well-known classic film, Gone with the Wind. The movie stars Jack Haley as the Tin Man. Judy Garland plays the role of Dorothy Gale. Ray Bulger is the Scarecrow. Burt Lair, the Cowardly Lion. Frank Morgan is the Wizard, plus five other roles. Billy Burke plays the role of Glinda, the Good Witch of the North. And of course, Margaret Hamilton, the Wicked Witch of the West. But our program today will focus on four individuals who played the roles of munchkins in the Hollywood film, three of which were actual adult little people, while the other was just a child portraying an adult munchkin. Do you know who that was? Hmm, you don't, huh? Well, we're about to tell you that, as well as share with you some other fun and interesting facts about The Wizard of Oz. So keep it right here on this episode of History and Relics. The idea for today's show came from this fantastic piece we recently came across. An autographed print of four individuals who played the role of a munchkin in the classic movie, The Wizard of Oz. This piece was signed by Donna Jean Stewart Hardway, Mickey Carroll, Jerry Marin, and Carl Slover. This was also authenticated by JSA, James Spence Authentication Services. So we thought we'd share this with you and tell a little of its story. So let's head down the yellow brick road and see what we found out. Donna Jean Stewart Hardway, also seen as Hardaway, was born April 2, 1933 in Los Angeles, California. She was merely six years old when she spent eight weeks of her career playing a tiny munchkin for MGM's classic, The Wizard of Oz. Known at the time as Donna Jean Johnson, she was the youngest munchkin on the Hollywood set. When talent scouts couldn't find enough adults of small stature, she was selected along with 11 other children to complete the colorful and lively population of Munchkinland. Child Munchkin roles in the movie were not as prominent as those of the true little people. Even though Donna had been prepared to, she was not allowed to sing, dance, or speak as were the 124 adults because of restrictions between the little people's contractual agent and MGM. Donna also played in several early episodes of Our Gang and The Little Rascals, but The Wizard of Oz remains the highlight of her career. Donna Hardway passed away on November 12, 2008 at the age of 75. Next up is Mickey Carroll, born Michael Finichario on July 8, 1919 in St. Louis, Missouri. He was born along with a twin sister who, unlike Carroll, was of average size. As a child, Carol began dance lessons at the Fox Theater in St. Louis. At age 17, he was one of six bellhops in the Call for Philip Morris live radio ads. And at 18, he was appearing in shows with none other than Mae West. While under contract to MGM, he went to school with Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney. It was Garland herself who offered him the part in The Wizard of Oz. Carol was cast as Munchkinland's town crier. His costume consisted of a purple cloak with a yellow flower sticking out of his striped vest. He also marched as a munchkin soldier and as one of the candy-striped fiddlers who escorted Dorothy down the yellow brick road towards the Emerald City. Soon after the success of the film, Carroll left show business. In the mid-1940s, he returned to St. Louis to run the family business of making cemetery monuments. 
known as the Standard Monument Company, founded in 1911, which operated a shop and showroom on St. Charles Rock Road in Wellston. Carroll sold the business in 1996 and filled his free time with charity work. On May 7, 2009, just a couple of months before his 90th birthday, Carroll died in his sleep at the home of his caretaker in Crestwood, Missouri. He suffered from a heart ailment and complications from Alzheimer's disease. Next we have Carl Slover. Born Karl Kasitsky on September 21, 1918 in Slovakia, he was diagnosed at an early age with pituitary dwarfism. Slover was barely two feet tall by his eighth birthday. Dwarfism was not a family trait. His father stood six foot six and his mother was just a few inches shorter than that. When Slover was just nine years old, his father sent him to work for a traveling show based out of Berlin, Germany. After working the show for several years, Slover moved to the United States where he joined another traveling show. And it wasn't long before Slover began appearing in films like The Terror of Tiny Town, also featuring fellow munchkin Jerry Moran, Blockheads, starring Laurel and Hardy, Bringing Up Baby with Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn, and They Gave Him a Gun, starring Spencer Tracy. Slover was working in Hawaii when a circus manager sent him to Hollywood, where little people were needed for an upcoming film called The Wizard of Oz. At the age of 21 and standing just 4 feet 4 inches, Slover played the parts of four munchkins in the movie. The first trumpeteer, a soldier, one of the sleepyheads, and was among those who sang Follow the Yellow Brick Road. After filming Oz, Slover began working for the original world-famous Singer's Midget Show, where he sang and danced throughout the United States. When the show ended in 1942, Slover joined the Royal American Carnival in Tampa, Florida. It was at this time he took the last name of Slover, the last name of his stage manager. Slover remained very active in his later years and participated in several celebrations related to the Wizard of Oz. Every June, Slover attended festivities celebrating Julie Garland's birthday at the Judy Garland Museum and Birthplace in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Slover died on November 15, 2011, at the age of 93. He was a lifelong bachelor and resided at an assistant living facility in Dublin, Georgia at the time of his death. And now we're on to Jerry Marin. Born Gerald Marenghi on January 24, 1920 in Lynn, Massachusetts, he was a member of the Munchkin Lollipop Guild. He was the last surviving adult Munchkin and was also the last surviving cast member with a specifically identifiable speaking or singing role. At age 12, Marin started taking dancing lessons with his sister. He toured around the New England area with his dance instructor with an act called Three Steps and a Hop and was noticed by Metro Goldwyn Mayer scouts who were looking for three little guys who could sing and dance. Marin received a telegram just after graduating from high school asking him to come out to California to work on a film. He was offered nearly $100 a week plus expenses. In The Wizard of Oz, he played the Green Guard member of the Lollipop Guild between Jacob Jackie Gerlich and Harry Earls, handing a lollipop to Dorothy Gale, played by Judy Garland. Marin was 18 or 19 years old when he shot his scenes for The Wizard of Oz in the latter part of 1938 and early 1939. At the time, he stood just three foot six. Hormone treatments allowed Marin to reach the height of four foot six later in life. Also in 1939, Marin appeared in an R Gang short called Tiny Troubles as the criminal Light Fingered Lester and was an extra alongside fellow Munchkin Carl Slover in the Western film The Terror of Tiny Town. After The Wizard of Oz, Marin had roles in several movies and television shows, including a circus performer in the Marx Brothers film At the Circus. In the 1950s, Marin worked as Little Oscar for the Oscar Meyer Company and as Buster Brown in television and radio commercials. Marin even had a walk-on role in an episode of Seinfeld in 1997 entitled The Yada Yada. In November 2007, Jerry joined Mickey Carroll, 
Carl Slover, and four other surviving Munchkins in Hollywood at the time, where honorary mayor Johnny Grant unveiled a star dedicated to the Munchkins on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Marin died in a nursing facility in La Jolla, California on May 24, 2018, at the age of 98, from a combination of old age-related diseases. At the time of his death, he was the last surviving member of the Wizard of Oz's adult Munchkin cast, as well as the last surviving actor to have co-starred in a film starring the Marx Brothers. Last but not least, we have six fun movie facts that you just may not have heard before. Are you ready? Let's test your knowledge. At just 10 years old, Shirley Temple fit the little girl profile of Dorothy Gale, much more than the teenage Judy Garland. She was also a box office sensation who could guarantee packed movie houses. So it made good business sense that some of the Wizard of Oz's producers were considering the child star for the role. But the official reason why Temple ultimately didn't end up as Dorothy remains part of Hollywood lore. It could have been because 20th Century Fox wouldn't loan her to MGM for the film, or because Temple was supposedly part of an inter-studio trade with Clark Gable and Gene Harlow until that fell through upon Harlow's death in 1937. Also, while Temple may have charmed movie audiences with her lovable rendition of On a Good Ship Lollipop, she really didn't stand a chance going up against the vocal powerhouse, Judy Garland. The sparkly ruby red shoes are a key to any Dorothy Gale costume, but one of the most important images of the enduring Wizard of Oz myths did not come from the mind of author L. Frank Baum, but instead from Oz screenwriter Noel Langley. In the wonderful Wizard of Oz book series, Dorothy's shoes were made of silver, However, Langley recommended the slippers be changed to ruby for the film due to the fact that the bright red hue would show up much better against the Technicolor Yellow Brick Road. Ray Bulger was originally casted as the Tin Man. He managed to convince the actor cast as the Scarecrow, Buddy Ebsen, to switch roles with him. Considering Ebsen was so easygoing about the change, it seemed like it was all meant to be. But just nine days into production on The Wizard of Oz, Epson found himself in the hospital, unable to breathe from an allergic reaction to the aluminum powdered makeup he wore as the Tin Man. He would be replaced by Jack Haley, whose makeup was changed from a powder to a paste. Well, as for Buddy Epson, he later went on to star in The Beverly Hillbillies TV show in the 1960s. Margaret Pellegrini, who portrayed one of the munchkins in the film, said that she was paid $50 a week to work on The Wizard of Oz. Well, in 1939, that was a pretty decent wage for a working actor or actress. The trouble was, Dorothy's canine companion, Toto, was pulling in a whopping $125 a week. The snow in the movie was made using the toxic mineral asbestos. In the early to mid-1900s, asbestos was used a lot during the holidays, as fake snow and other Christmas decorations with dozens of brands popping up like White Magic, Pure White, and Snowdrift. Asbestos was also reportedly used on Ray Bulger's Scarecrow costume. Since the character had several run-ins with fire in the movie, it's believed that his costume was sprayed with a flame-proofing material made from asbestos. In addition, Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch of the West, uses a burning broom, which was also made of asbestos, to keep it from actually burning away on the set. And lastly, for all you Cleveland, Ohio fans out there, Margaret Hamilton was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1902. She became a school teacher, but studied theater at the Cleveland Playhouse. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. A link is provided here on your screen as well as in the description area below. And until next time, everyone, this one is history.